In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some insight into the meta of the streak. And, and really what I mean by that is how to pick the right streak for the right type of situation that you're going to be in. I think this is a really important conversation to have, uh, especially with some of the meta that I experienced just now on the weekend league. So I wanted to do this video. If you've never been to my YouTube channel before, this is going to be a little bit more of an in-depth video. I normally do four videos a day. And one of them is typically a longer video that goes in depth on something. I think this is going to help you guys. I think this is going to help a lot of people. So be sure to watch this video all the way through because we're going to dive into some stuff. This is going to be a little bit of a live lab session uh, for you guys. I want you to experience kind of the process, uh, how things are built. And I think this is just going to be fun. It's going to be good for me and I hope it's good for you. So if you're interested in my channel, my name's Cody and I basically um, do tips and tricks on, on Madden 21. I try to get better. I'm not the best player in the game. I'm not. I, I have not. Uh, I did not go 25 and 0 on weekend league, right? I'm not D Croft. I'm not. I'm not those guys. But I learn from those guys, and I try to take you know a different uh, spin on the game, and I think I'm okay. Now we're gonna jump into this real quick. For if you've purchased my uh, offensive and defensive guides, um, they're in the description below. If you haven't, but if you've purchased those, you know that I, or if you've watched any of my videos at all, you know that I love the Arizona Cardinals playbook. You also know that I love the gun spread, and. Um, one of the things that we talk about in the ebook is, and one of the reasons I love the Arizona playbook so much is because they give you different types of streaks for different types of situations. We're going to talk, I'm going to talk about what I mean by that here in just a second. But, but first, what I want to do is I want to talk about a little bit of uh, strategy. We're going to dive, this is going to be a little bit of a deep dive today into zone drops because I think this is significant. And, and what I was experiencing, um, it's Madden is a lot different now. Um, with, zone, with the institution and zone drops. Zone drops have changed everything. The ability to drop flats 30 yards down the field, they basically, like, I don't know, they don't really play like a deep blue, but at the same time, they don't really play like a flat zone. So I don't know exactly how to describe this, but this gives defensive uh, users all, a ton of a ton of opportunity um, for, for, um, for coverage defense. So we're going to dive into this, and I don't know, we're just going to do some testing, okay? Uh, and, and some live testing here. And primarily what I want to focus on and I want to make sure that I get um, if I can find a I don't I only want three guys blitzing I, I don't want more than three let me see if I can find a good Tampa two um, cover two let me see if I can find something here uh, out of this this is the four six playbook uh, we could just we I don't want to have to hot route the guy to the zone that's the only thing because it's just going to take more time let me see here We'll, we'll just go with the cover two press out of the dollar because I want the vert hooks on the outside, not on the inside. And then what we'll do is we'll just hot route that blitzing linebacker to a deep blue. This is just a standard cover two coverage defense. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about streaks. So look at this. If you look at the play um, spread by flex, if you look at the play shallow cross, you see that the fade is, and I'm just going to put all of these plays in my audible. So i got shallow cross here. I've got, H shallow cross, you see it's got the stock fade up the left side. And then on stick, you see how it's got an outside break uh, on that play? That's that's the play I talked about as well with the ability to be able to beat man-to-man -man really well. We're going to get into that uh, in just a minute. And then you've got um, four verticals, right? Just standard four verticals where they're, they're basically fades, okay? Spread Y slot, same, much, much of the same, right? You've got Y cross with that stock streak up the right sideline you've got um you've got h shallow cross where he's on a fade and then you'll see here uh this is a y shallow cross where he's on a fade on the right and then you've got four verticals it puts them both on the stock fade so what we're going to be going over today is we're going to be going over hot routed fades streaks um what i would call old school fades and then what i would call old school um I don't know. They're both kind of old school fades. They're fades from previous Maddens that you can't get. You can't just hot route anymore. And then sale, you see we've got the stock route on the right side uh, that we like. And then I'm going to add in stick. It's got a little bit of an invert to the fade route, so I want to check that out. And then slot corner is just a streak. Uh, I don't think there's anything crazy with that. Uh, we can test it. Why not? Uh, we'll take stick wheel out, and we'll put slot corner in uh, da, 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 right there. And then out of, uh, we'll just go through the playbook here. So gun tray open, you can have stick. 
Uh, also, I really like X Drag. I think X Drag is very unique. Uh, spacing HP. Well, you've got an inverted streak, which is nice. And we're, we're seriously, you know, what I wanted to do today, literally, is to talk to you guys about these these routes and how to pick the right route for the right situation. Okay, so uh, specifically as it pertains to streaks, um, five wide. You've got uh, Dig Curl Reed. Let me just see here. We've got stick and nod with stock fades on the outside. Verticals wise shake. Double N has that little route to the right, but you see you don't got any you don't have anything out of five wide other than the fake screen verticals, which is fine. You can do something with that right there. Uh, gives you that stock fade on that side. We're just gonna go through here and grab a couple plays that I'm gonna go out into practice mode and kind of explain what this all means uh, for the offensive side of the ball. So, and then let me just check the doubles in the playbook. I don't know if we have anything in here from gun doubles that we could really justify being effective. Because what we have is we have that stick route, but we don't have that route to the left side. And that does concern me just a little bit, just knowing the way, Matt, you know, to me, part of having a good scheme is being able to do the same thing both sides of the ball. Uh, or both sides of the field so that they can't they can't just key in on one side PA but PA bubble over I need to run that play more um, I need to run more gun doubles in my life but we'll just go through here so you see you see how there's all these different streaks and all these different streaks lead to something different happening on the actual field uh, gun tray offsets got this play from stick I might need to run this formation a little bit more I haven't ran this much um, this is basically Arizona's trips tied in um, let's see here if we have anything else, anything else, gun open flex has stock fades on both sides of the ball. We'll throw that in there just to show that. Uh, it's got some really good vertical routes out of there. Uh, gun cluster, and then I did want to show this. Um, so you see PA read, and I need to put that in my audibles because we're going to talk about that. So you've got um, you've got a stock fade from the inside slot receiver we're going to talk about that as well there was last year there were some things you could do with that streak again this is going to be a longer video so stick around if you if you guys want to just uh get to the meat and potatoes of it what i would do is just click subscribe because what we'll do is we'll we'll cut up and we'll put this into um, a shorter form, form video where I talk about specifically why this streak, why this streak, why this streak once we've gone through this. But I do want to show you guys kind of how the process is done, kind of how I lab, what I look for. And specifically what we're going to be looking at is zone drops today and streaks and kind of how they play with one another. Uh, so I hope this video is very helpful. But if you guys want to move on, one of the things I want to encourage you to do before you click off of this video is to, number one, click subscribe so you can get the actual information when we release it. It's going to be released in this video. We're going to find it here in about five minutes, five, ten minutes. But also... I want to encourage you to jump in the Discord. If you have not been in the Discord, the Discord is basically a communication platform for my channel. It's where we talk Madden, where we learn Madden, where we grow, where I personally have grown a lot from our members. And just we just chill and talk Madden. You know, my channel, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say we're not trying to be competitive because we are trying to be competitive here. But I'm not the best player. I'll be the first one to admit that. But I love the game. And I think that I know a little bit about the game. And hopefully uh, a lot of players that I've been able to bring up have told me consistently that the discord has helped them get better because again if you want to change the people around you you need to change the people around you if you want to prove you got to get better people around you and that's what discord does so jump in the discord the link's in the description all right so what we're going to do is we're literally just going to come out and we're just going to talk about fade or streaks so i'm going to come out and hitch seam not because we're going to run this but the play we're going to first look at is the stock fade you see the to, to is scantling. You see this stock fade right here. Now, what we're in it, what we're trying to figure out, what we're trying to figure out, okay? Number one is how does this do against cover two? Because cover two, to me, if you can beat the flat zones, if you can consistently beat the flat zones that are dropped at 30 yards, that's the main thing. So let's just see. This is a 30 yard flat right there and i could pass that to the outside and you see the safety is able to get there so now this raises a question what if the what if okay just what if what if the ball is on the 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 right hash and you're going to run this streak to the boundary or i'm sorry to the field to the field to the wide side of the field as my man kilo taught me all right so why cross Coming out in here. Now watch this Watch this streak here. And one of the things we're going to do, because we're just going to test this out. We're going to say, what if what if we just run a five-yard out or a quick out 
in combination with this route because this is a really good play. This this Y cross play is really, really good this year um, because of this, specifically because of this route of the tight end. But anyway, let's just take a look at this. So can we get this ball to the left? And you see here we can. Very, very simply. Now, the question that we have to ask, and, and, and this is important because of Madden Ultimate Team, this is important. If you want to be effective in MUT, one of the things that you have to understand is you have to test this against really, really good corners. If you don't, if you don't test it against good corners, then what's going to happen is you're going to have half, half, um, half done information. You know, and I've been guilty of that. And I know I know a lot of people have been guilty of that. You know, it's not about guilt. It's not about whatever. It's about growing and getting better. So anyway, uh, let's jump into this. Cover two press. Now, that I got two questions. Number one, how does it act against backed off coverage? How does it act against this? The level of detail, right? That's, that's to me, really important. So why cross? You see there's that fade to the left. Now we got Jamal Adams over there. Jamal Adams is a stud. Let's see what he does. And we all know in Mutt he's a stud too. And you see here we're able to get the ball out there. So now we know. That's a 30-yard, you know, let me just clarify so you know. This is 30-yard coaching adjustments. You're going to see my job, my flats are set to 30 yards. The reason I wanted to do that is because I want to know how the game works, right? I want to know how the game works. So now there's a, there's a, there's a couple of things that we have to understand as players. How do you read this? How do you know that he's in? A, a cloud flat uh well let's check let's let's shake coverage down here let's go ahead and press see if it bumps him um and then let's go into hard flats and let's see what happens this is a press he should get pressed here uh whoops i'm sorry i didn't call the right play so he should get pressed here so now we're going to test and see how this how this goes against um against this defense right he's hard flatting on that side he should be uh he's shading coverage down Okay, and he should be pressing. Okay, so now we're going to go to Y cross, and all we're going to do is run the play. And you're going to see here, doesn't get pressed, and I think it's because he's in a zone drop, personally. When you zone drop, I don't think you can press, right? So I think that's significant. So, and you see, we're still able to beat this. Let me show you an instant replay what happens. This is where instant replay is so important. Instant replay is one of the most important tools in the game, and nobody talks about this. But this is these are the little things that make people effective. Wide side of the field, you're gonna see he's on that stock fade. And you see that, see how the blue just lets him go. Even though he's man aligned and pressed, he lets him go. Okay. If he's base aligned, let me just explain the difference, right? Man aligned means they're going to line up over the man. Base aligned means they're gonna line up like the base formation looks in your audibles. They're gonna literally cookie cutter the base formation. So if they base align and press. You see that the corner on the left side moves in. See that movement? Especially to the wide side of the field. You run Y cross. This is an absolute dot. I mean, it should be. As of course, as we throw a pick. Um, let me show you this again. You should be able to hit this route. I think I threw it a little bit too early. One of the issues, um, baseline press. We'll show you right here. And then we're cloud flats, hard flat, soft scouts. So it doesn't matter because they're dropped at 30 yards. Okay. So we're going to go to Y cross, and what you're going to see here is we should be able to pass that to the left, click on, and easily have a dot against cover two, as you can see. Okay? That's, so So we what we've understood now, and now what we're going to do is we're going to test this to the short side of the field and see what happens. Because what I know about Madden, this is one of the biggest adjustments I think for me, for me personally, it's been one of the biggest adjustments I've had to make. The game plays different based on the hashes that you're on. So if you're, if specifically in zone coverage. If you're on the left hash and you run, if if you're running a route to the wide side of the field or to the short side of the field or to the field or to the boundary, the the, the defensive coverage is going to play different. So uh, let's come over here and let's go to my one of my favorite plays in the game, Y sale from doubles. This is what you see here. See, and all that's all that moves right there. And it, you could even flex him out, as you can see here. We can flex Steinberger out. Now, all I want to do is I just want to take – I just want to set up something like this. I don't want it to be too crazy. What I'm trying to figure out is what happens to Devonte Adams on this play. What is happening in cover two? Because this is this is informing me how these stock, how these um, little drifty. I don't know. I don't know what exactly to call them. A lot of people call them old school fades, but the reality is I don't think they're actually old school fades because 
there's other these are fades from like Madden. I would call them angled to the outside. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to call them. But anyway, this route to Devonte Adams. Let's see what happens. Cover two. See, he doesn't get pressed. Can I pass that to the right? And they could probably click on and pick there, but I can fit that in. You see, I can fit that in. Now the question is, and 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 now we what we have to ask is when you run something like this, a couple of things you have to ask yourself. Number one, how do we get the safety? How do we get that deep half safety to get out of the way? That's one question we've got to ask. Because if, if he's a deep blue, if he's a good safety, this is not going to be an option. You're going to see here, if I try to pass like that, you see there, like Devontae Adams just went crazy. But the throw's not really there. The window's not really there, right? Um, it's just It's just not quite there. So now uh, what I got to do is I got to figure out, and we'll show it to you one more time here, because I want to give it some time, let the let the play really develop. Uh, we'll go to night this one out of doubles, right here, flat route. Pass through that to the right, and you see the throws kind of there. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna run our process. You know, part of being in a lab, and the reason we call it a lab, this is this is why Matt, this is why I I know to call it the lab. Okay, when we say lab, or when I say lab, what I mean is science experiments. Think science, and whenever you're doing a science experiment, one of the one of the things that is really really important when you're doing a science experiment is to control the variables, right? You you literally want to take a scientific approach to this game. And it does take a significant amount of time. That's why, if you want to save yourself some time, pick up the ebook in the description because I've done the lab work for you. I've experimented, I've tested everything. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, we're going to put Jamal Adams over there, okay, just to see how he does against the same exact situation. So we're going to our little play here, Y Sail. Got that nice wrap to the rim. Like I, I literally need to call this play so much more than I do. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna press coverage, and what 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 we're testing here is how fast does Jamal Adams get over there? And let's just put the tight end on a flat route just to test this. See, he's able to swat it. So what that tells me is now that is not a viable concept for Mutt, because in Mutt everybody's Jamal Adams, everybody's Stephon Gilmore, everybody's Devonte Adams. You see what I'm saying? In regs, it's viable because if they don't have a good safety over there, if they doesn't have good coverage, doesn't have good ratings, he's not going to break on the ball. But in Mutt, that's completely different. Now, let's test this with trips. Test this route with trips. As you can see here, sale concept, very, very simple. And let's just test this route with trips. And you see Jamal Adams is able to make the play on the ball. So what that tells me is this route – this route – in theory, when you think they're running a cover two defense on you, you want to run this route concept to the wide side of the field because they'll never stop it. Let me show you what I mean. Here we're going to do, we're just going to respot the ball. And we're going to run the same play, but we're going to have a different outcome. And we'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So we're going to go to doubles, uh, doubles Y off, sale play. I'm just going to block the tight end. And what you'll see is this route to Devontae Adams. Gonna absolutely torch the cover two man. Yeah, almost. Almost. Almost torched it. Let's see. One of the other things that you have to understand as well, and this is something that took me a little bit of, of time to understand this, is alignment. Where is Devontae Adams? Right? He is outside. So it's different principles as well. So part of that is alignment too, to me. Um, but what you'll see here. If I motion, you want to test if you motion players, where do they go? Well, I can only motion Devontae Adams to the left. So let's see what happens when I motion him to the left. You see he's going to come inside here. What this means is now this adds a whole other layer to everything. But first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to show you this play whenever he's outside. So watch this. You're going to be able, if you step up in the pocket, pass that up, not up, and not up, I'm sorry. Pass lead up and to the right. Okay, you you. The, it's more important for you to pass lead this to the right, and we'll show you why in here in just a second. Now, one thing that there is a little trick that you can do, and this is where I talk about levels concepts being so significantly important. Um, 
from this specific play here even but you'll see Stein, Sternberger on the on this little uh corner route the this he'll hold the safety for just a split second but what I want to do is I want to show you this route real quick without it and then we'll talk about it with it right outside click on and you see you can fit that in if you can get that possession catch it's a tighter window on the right side I mean it's a tighter window now part of why that is the case is because of the alignment of the wide receivers and the it all comes into fruition all comes into effect so now what we've got to do is say okay well if i run 94 y you right now now the tight ends on the line the wide receivers off the line and it's going to be completely different you're going to see here there's more of it's going to beat it better isn't that interesting isn't that interesting you can have you if you have a tight end on the line of scrimmage um it completely changes how they play. It completely changes the routes. So what was being, you know, beating the defense by inches is now beating the defense for basically a one-play touchdown, right? And this is man aligned. This is this is straight up man aligned. Shake up drift. I mean, this should not work, right? In theory, because we're gonna throw this route at, at probably 20, 20 ish yards. And what you'll see is he's gonna get over the top. Once he gets over the top, you click on and you're able to get the ball out there. That's very interesting to me, right? Very, very interesting to me. Now what we're going to do is we are going to um, test this out against like a compression type of set. So uh, let's go to gun doubles uh, and let's just go to the – I did want to show one other thing with this. If we go to sail out of doubles off, watch what you can do. So you can motion the tight end to the right. What you'll see here, he's now going to flex out as like a wide receiver, kind of like a shotgun spread, basically. And what you'll see is it's going to completely change how the defense plays. Um, if he sets, I don't know why he's having so many issues. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Let's get him out here. Set his feet. There we go. And you see you've got just a little bit more space, about an inch, about an inch more. But, you know, you're able to beat Jamal Adams. This is what we talk about when we say labbing. Now the question, now, now the question that you've got to ask yourself is: That's what a stock fade looks like. What about just a standard streak? So if I just streak Devonte Adams, what you're going to see here is he does kind of beat cover two, and that's interesting because that didn't happen last year. That did not happen last year. Um, last year, if you if you streaked a receiver. Like it was, it was pointless. It was basically pointless to use a streak. Here you see, it's 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 a it's not really beating it. You know, I mean, it's it's not beating it to the degree that it could. Now, what if we fade him? Right, everything is the same. Now we're gonna fade him, and you're gonna see he's not gonna beat it as good. So now what we have just learned, we've have we have a takeaway from all of this. If you want to beat cover two, use the use the wiggly fade that goes to the outside. The fade like what that is scantling's on right here. Okay, now now what you can do with this, and this is what we understand now. Remember, we understand that if the wide receiver is off the line of scrimmage, it's going to help him beat that coverage. So we're going to motion that receiver to the left, and we'll look at what happens. This is against this is against short side. So you now can beat cover two on both sides of the field. In fact, what you can do is you can go to a play like this from doubles. This is um this play right here might be the best cover two beater in the game because you can beat cover two on both sides of the field filled with this um you see that and your your vertical um your vertical push from the from the from the tight end is gonna is gonna help you with this right he's he's gonna help you with this so so now what you what you have is is you have two and you know this could literally be a little little play here but you could run little quick outs right little quick ins quick outs with these guys but now you're able to beat cover two at a pretty high level at a pretty high level you can hit those fades on both sides so if they're running cover two you could audible over into something like this and what we've learned is the stock fade is the best way uh we'll show you four verticals here see how you have fades on both sides if we were if we are to run these fades on both sides they can kind of get it they can kind of beat it, but not, not, not for anything like that. I would say is super. Um, we'll show you this here on this side. So if we try to run this, you see right there, it's just not there. Now, 
That's what zone drops at 30 yards, okay? I do want to clarify one thing for you right now. That's what zone drops at 30 yards. What happens What happens when the defense is not doing zone drops, right? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. So if they're not doing zone drops on their flats, um, it does change things a little bit. So if they're a dollar and we'll go cover two press, what you're going to find is, and we're just going to come back out in our stuff, same stuff, right? So I'm going to go to, um, is it PA bubble? So I get that fade. No, I don't. That's actually a really good route combo. This this combination right here is pretty sick. Um, all right, why sale? This is why I love Arizona's playbook so much. But anyway, what you're going to see now is Adams should get rerouted. He doesn't here. He doesn't here. But watch what happens. So I'm going to tell the defense to press. And what should happen, at least I thought, that he gets pressed. And it may just be on the short side that he gets pressed. But we'll see. This is wide side. Oh, they don't press him. Well, there you go. I guess that's the best play in the game. Boom. What you find out when you laugh. They don't. That's crazy. I thought they pressed. Maybe it's just on, um, hmm. And I've been pressed so many times out of Y cross. Let's check Y cross to the left side. Does it get pressed? Nope. They don't press. That's crazy. That's crazy. Live lab. You never know what you're going to find. So those routes don't get cover two press. That's what I'm running. Maybe let's just see if I don't do anything. Let's just not do anything at all. Let's just see. Do they press out of another place? Why are they not pressing? Let's try four verticals. Let's try four verticals. That'll, that'll tell us for sure. That'll tell us for sure, guys. So we're audible to cover two press. Maybe we'll have to take all of the zone drops off. I think it's because we have one zone drop on, and if you have one zone drop on, that might be it. Let's test that. If you want zone chucks, you can't zoom. You can't use zone drops. I think that might be what we're finding out here. Auto alignment. Let's just everything default. Okay, dollar cover two press. Right, it's in the it's in the name. They should be pressing, right? EA Sports. It's in the name. Now let's watch four verticals on this side here. See, now they get pressed. Now they get pressed. Now that's a significant thing to understand. So when you're playing just, you know, your average Joe online, they're probably not going to do zone drops. What's interesting is, so look at this animation here. See the bump, the reroute. I think he's going to get one here. Watch. Oh, he didn't. Let's see over here. Let's test this. This, let's see what these guys, no reroute. The outside guys get the bump. Okay, so that's traditional. That's what I was expecting to have happen. So when you're playing your average Joe online, what you're gonna find is he's not, he's gonna run that. Um, he's gonna run that version of cover two. So let me show you what that means for your route that we just broke down. Now this also means they're not gonna be able to zone drop the flat. The flat, the cloud flat's gonna play its default principles. It's not gonna go deeper. So there's the reroute. See how he gets that outside leverage and you're still able to kill it? Still able to kill cover two with that? That is how we understand now that we have found a universal way to beat the cover two. That makes Does that make sense? It took us 25 to 30 minutes to come in the lab and figure, and test all of this stuff out. You know, And some of you are like, well, I already knew that. Well, now you know why it works. Now you understand why. The why behind it is he gets outside release because he's on the wide side of the field. You pop that in, it's an easy dot. It's like 40, 50 yards that you're going to be able to get. Now, the question that I have, and this is, and, and we'll get into this in just a second, but let's test let's test uh, Y cross here and see what kind of release he's going to, he should get, he does get outside too. Oh, well, there you go. He gets outside release too. Man, I could have sworn I've run that, I've run those plays a million times. Maybe it's when they're base aligning. You know what I mean? Maybe it's when they're base aligning. So now I'll take a look. So in a base align alignment, base align, press. Now look at the left side. You see how the left side corners to the outside? 
Now let's run right, run Y cross against something like that. Oh, he doesn't press at all. So when they base a line, they can't press. Interesting, interesting. Let's try man line real quick. See, this is what we talk about science experiments, right? We're testing everything with this route. There's the inside chuck. Now, even though he inside presses, even though he, even though he inside presses, uh, sorry, I'll turn my phone off while I'm recording. Even though he inside presses, and to me, this is just so significant. So it's man align, press, and what you'll find, he should press that outside guy. But you see how he still gets that outside release sometimes? And what's interesting is even when he gets a even when he gets an inside uh, chuck, so we should get inside chuck here. There it is. Pass lead hard left. Click on. You can kind of get that in, even though it's at the short side. You can definitely get it in on the wide side. I know you can. Uh, we'll show you that here. Is it eight shallow curls? No. Why shallow? That's not the fade I want. Let's come back over to gun doubles then. That's the only downside is you don't have them from both sides. So, uh, man line press. Devontae Adams should get sh should get sent to the inside. There you see, there's the inside. If I pass lead that to the outside, though, it's an easy dot. You're still able to get it over there. And that's if they don't do zone drops and if they man align and if they've pre you know what I mean? There's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors. Um, now the question is, what happens with shading, right? How does shading affect this? Um, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. So if we go, you know what? It might just be best just to go to this play right here because you got them on both sides. So if we go to this play, watch what happens. So um, Devontae Adams is going to get sent to the inside. We shaded over top. But you see, you're still able. You see how that window does tighten, and that's that's you know that's significant because in mutt we understand that this is going to be a big deal. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to shade coverage over over top and outside. See, this is just. I mean, this is why you lab. This is why you do it, right? He's offline of scrimmage. You can kind of get it in there, but it's it's tender. It's a tender throw for sure. So now, this is what I want to talk about now. How do you combat it when you start to see something like this, where you're getting inside chuck, inside chuck out of a man aligned type of situation? Well, to me, that's where you're, um, that is where this, this specific streak right here, which is very rare that I would ever use this. But the stock fade, what you'll find is it never gets chucked to the inside. He always gets an outside release. And he's gonna kill the cover too. Does that make sense now? Hopefully you guys are, you know, hopefully you guys are understanding this. Um, so what happens is, you know, when you're the stock, um, not the stock, the hot routed. So you can hot route this route. Literally, I can just, I hit triangle, circle, flick the right stick up to put him on a fade, and he's on a fade now. Now watch this route. Ooh, got inside jumped. Interesting. Got inside chuck. Let's check, let's test that again. Got inside chuck. That's not good. Does that mean it has to be stocked to the play? No, nope, there you see. There's the outside. You need the outside release. That's the key. Does that make you know? Does that making sense to everybody? Uh, and I'm going to show you one little tip about how you can get around that. But you'll see he'll consistently get the outside release. I think it was because I didn't. Um, I didn't do a specific setup there. But literally, if I just hot route him to it, outside reliefs, pass lead to the outside, click on, you got a secure catch for a 50 yard dot, 30 yard dot, right? Cover two. You can, and you can see I can do this all day. And I can just fit that in right there. There's just nothing the defense can do. The issue is if you run that on the left side of the field, watch, you get inside chucked, and it's just the throw's not there, as you can see. There's no opportunity to throw it. Um, there's an outside release, and you see we can get it in. It's interesting how it kind of was a right. It's almost like a dice roll. I think it might have to do with ratings. But there's that inside chuck. If I pass it to the left, it's like 
if you can get an animation like that, you're golden. But if you can't, there's the outside release. Uh, it might have something to do with your release ratings, honestly. Uh, and we could dive into that at a later date. But from what I'm seeing, the most consistent is still going to be those stock fades on both sides. See how if I put him on a fade, hot routed fade, he's inside release and it's just no good. Now what you'll find is, let's see what happens if we shade, if we press and shade outside. Let's go to, so I'm going to man align. You see that doesn't really move anybody. I'm going to press coverage. That doesn't move anybody. Now I'm going to shade coverage outside. And let's just see what happens. Devonta Adams is still able to get the outside release. So it looks like those in general grant an outside release. But what's crazy is I have I can tell you I've played games where I have not gotten the outside release that I needed on the short side. It might it must it must have to do with the fact that maybe my receivers were just not good. I mean I don't know because what we're finding out in this live lab session as a general rule. Those wiggly fades are always going to get an outside release against cover two, and basically they're going to. That, what that means is it's going to kill it. Now, uh, one other thing that we have to consider, and that is what happens if they um, come out in a defense. There's two. There's two types of coverages I do want to go over real quick. So you could see, we can probably do it. We can probably do it from this if I had. Do they have cover three cloud? Cover nine? No, they don't. All right, we'll do nickel three, three, five. And the play is cover three cloud. Now, they can only run this to one side of the field. They can't run it to two. Okay, that's part of understanding, again, understanding the plays and understanding what they can do. But I've seen this a lot, too. So they've got the flat on the outside. they got this deep third. And what happens is this deep third plays the streak to Adams a little bit better. So if I'm just running my standard setup here, see that, see how he plays that? That makes sense. So let me show you this in instant replay. This is significant. Okay, this is not this is not a this is a big deal. Outside thirds, if you watch this little animation let me try to get it again. So here he gets his outside release, but watch. From the play, from the play starting, you see that 21 is looking at Devontae Adams. So he's now going to be able to go over and swat this ball. Now the question that I have within this is, let's flip this and run it to the short side. It probably works the same on the short side. You'll see here. Yeah works exactly the same on the short side now my question is because of the way that the deep third is kind of coming down and then coming out which is a different thing this year what happens if i just lob it nothing you see i can use or catch it but that's not consistent um okay so basically what that means now and now we have to go back to our test all the streaks right does the stock fade work does this work does it whatever work and what you'll probably find is, see here, the stock fade does work. You can flip, you can fit it in right in behind there. Now, what I love about spread is if I do something like this. Let me show you how to gun doubles. If I take Y sale, and let's say I just, um, let's say I streak this receiver right here. Okay, so you got a streak and you got a stock fade. I don't know why I'm having so many issues with this guy. Cover three cloud, um, what should happen is that deep blue safety should go to Devontae Adams. There you, there you see, see this, and this is going to completely glitch it out. Um, this is why four verticals and the idea of the air raid, when people were designing this offense, they were talking about six and the importance of six, especially against zone coverage. Now, you're, I get a lot of man-to-man, -man personally. Um, but watch what happens, and let me just show you. Let's just let the play run here. 
this thing is crazy. I don't know why this guy's doing this. But this is this is literally the same. I mean, this is basically gun spread. So watch what happens here. See how he doesn't really know who to guard? He's able to guard both, but he's not he's he's gonna glitch out for a second because you've run the four vertical. Because you've you've because you've sent somebody up the seam. That's the bottom line. You've sent you've you've sent somebody up the up the seam that he has to be concerned about. So that deep third is now, if you take a look, and even, you know, I think it's going to change even if you fade him. Um, this is crazy glitch here. He just doesn't set his feet. One snap of the ball, what should happen is he's going to glitch out, which allows you to pass lead that to the right very easily. And that's um, 21. That's not Jamal Adams. Let's put Jamal Adams there and test that real quick. But hopefully you're starting to see. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot that goes into this. The ratings matter. Um, you know, they, they didn't used to. Um, abilities have changed everything, in my opinion. Um, but this cover three cloud, to me, is the best possible way to stop what a lot of people are going to want to do, or to stop these stock fades, these, these fade routes that I'm talking about. And you know what? Let's just come out in the gun doubles. Uh, why off here? My man Steinberger. All right, and the play we're focusing on is Y sale. Okay. So we're going to do motion this guy out. And this is just straight cover three cloud. The zone drops aren't set on this either. So I we will do that in just a second, and I'll talk about that in just a second. What you'll see here is it still works. You can still glitch. See how it still glitches out the corner. Now, the question that I have is what can I do this from the interior? So if I don't motion him out, what happens? See how I have to motion him into the slot? Isn't that interesting? How how alignment does play a factor. And I bet you money if I bring Lazard across, it's going to change everything too. Mm. I want to be able to fit that seam in. Because what I could see happening is them saying, okay, well, I'm going to... That what I like about this is this completely glitches out that side of the field. That deep blue is is the is thing that gets glitched here, not glitched, but just rerouted, and that one little second makes all the difference in the world. Now, uh, the question is, what if you what if you stock? What if you just fade Adams? Right? What if you just fade him? What if we just leave him on the corner route? Actually, let's see. And Jamal Adams just covered two people. The simple flood concept is nothing too fancy, but when you put him on the vertical, I think it changes things. Let's try just a fade. It's got an outside release that might hold him just a little bit longer. Nope. Oh, he completely left the fade alone. Completely left the fade alone on that. Interesting. Hmm. You can inside pass lead that, but see, here's here's the thing that I'm going to guarantee is going to happen. I guarantee you they're going to use him. So I would just leave him on the street because you're going to completely glitch out. And I'm going to re-hot route that corner on that side to a cloud flat. Ooh, wow, he got, the, he got the inside chuck. That ain't cool. That ain't cool. That ain't cool. Uh-oh. Put him on a cloud flat now out of cover three cloud. Let's see. Oh, he backs up. This is going to add a new development to it. Let's see. Outside release. Wow. That's crazy. Cover three cloud is probably going to be the best bet that people are going to have at stopping this. Even though in theory, it's still a cover two. I'll show you how to glitch out cover three cloud here in just a second. See how he takes that false step? But the question, but he's he's getting out there, especially if you re if you rezone him. Your dots have to be crispy on this. All right, so here's how you glitch out cover through cloud. Let me see if I can find the play. Now this is another thing that we do know. Um, 
This is another thing we do know very well about Madden. As a general rule, corner routes, this is just my personal opinion, corner routes to the outside breaking player, um, the, the furthest player outside, if you put him on a corner route, if you can, or if you have a corner route, he's going to pull. So this is why mesh is so important. Because if you're if they start going cover through cloud, well, then you can run this play right here. And what you'll see is this is going to completely glitch out that deep third. Ah, it's because I motioned him. They've, they've fixed the motion thing. But literally, I'm just going to streak Lewis. Watch. He's going to play there. And that leaves this window of opportunity to throw right in behind the seam. And they're going to have to use her that. More than likely, they're not going to. Um, more than likely, they're not expecting this, especially in cover through cloud. But literally, I can just lob it up, click on. And this is basically gun bunch, right? This is basically, you know, a simple beater from bunch. Now, what's really cool about it is if you go into, let's say you run cluster, and you're going to see the same basic concept is going to happen. But now you have a wide receiver running the route. So there's the corner. He's going to take him. You pass through that to the right. Click on, and you've absolutely killed the cover three. These are coverages that me not meta. Don't hear me wrong when I say meta. What I mean by this is I mean, and the reason this is significant, these are what people are going to do to stop what you do. This is the counters. This is under understanding some of the counters to what people are going to do. So... One of the other things that I get a lot is I get a lot of this play right here. So um, big nickel over G, and what they're going to basically do, let me baseline this. They're going to run this guy right here because you can put him in an outside third. You can do that right there. And then what they're going to do with this guy is maybe they throw him into a middle third, right? Well, now... Now, under do understand that you can't do anything over here, but what uh, what the people like about this is they can basically put outside thirds all over the field. It's going to help with the cover two. It's going to help the cover two play better. Um, so now what you'll see is if I run the play that we just discussed as a cover two beater, that will beat cover two. It will beat deep halves, right? What you're going to see is this is going to struggle to beat. Um, cover two now granted he is base aligned but watch you see how you can get that this year you weren't able to do that last year last year that was interception is an interception this year um just because of the way that they've kind of at least in my opinion tried to make passing a little bit better but this is basically a roll uh, outside third left and then l1 is on an outside third right and then safety is on a middle third. So this is a roll cover three. It's actually a really cool coverage, right? Cool coverage concept that you can create from big nickel over G. Well, if I go into my gun doubles, Y sale, so I get that stock fade to the wide side of the field, what you'll see is I'm going to put that same streak out there. This is going to glitch out the deep third. Watch, he's going to have to, he's going to, have to honor Mercedes Lewis if Mercedes Lewis can set his feet. You see, you get the bump, and you see how Jamal Adams is in the is in the conversation, right? He's in the play. In Mutt, that's going to be an interception. So, uh, you know, that's that's what people have understood and understood to do, and it's a it's a very good tactic. It's a very good concept. Um, what we have to do as a community, in my opinion, is grow from this. Understand. Well, this leaves other. There's no one-stop shop for defense. There's no one-stop shop. There's no one play that's just better than everything else, right? It's, you know, every play leaves you vulnerable to something else. It's what we love about Madden. At least I I do. So if I run mesh here, in theory, Valdez Scantling should take the deep third, and there should be nobody for Mercedes Lewis. Let's see what happens. He takes the deep third, passes that to the right. You click on, and you can kind of get that in there. And more than likely, what you're going to see is something like this. This combination right here is what we want to try to figure out how to get. So if I run mesh with that streak, watch Adams. He's going right. 
pass lead that to the right, and you see you've got a one play touchdown. Or, uh, especially if you have a faster guy like Jermichael Finley or a fast receiver there, you've got a dot. Now, um, and then you can also do this from the cluster. So if you if you go to the cluster, you throw a receiver there. And the cluster, I think, is going to be even better because they're going to press up. They got their cloud out there trying to bait you into throwing this. They got this guy in the middle third. And they got this guy in an outside third. Outside thirds don't typically play interior streaks. So if you ran something like this right here, you see how you can kind of, yeah, kind of get it there. But to me, this is, I mean, there's just so much in this. That little setup right there, um, and that's why I love Mash against Zone. They just, you can pass lead those routes all day. But anyway, um, you know, th that's that's basically uh, how they're going to handle this um, this concept that you've got. Now, what you can do, uh, this is what I would do, is if you go into, let's say you run, let's say you run, you'll see to the short side of the field, this is, um, Let's see, let me get out of that. I go into, where's the play I want to talk about? Why stick? You'll see that this route is always going to get the outside release. You're going to throw the streak up right here. Watch this, it's snap of the ball. You see how you can get that? See, now that's why that, see how all of these streaks have different strengths and weaknesses? Because if they're running zone drops against this, it's not going to work. But look at this. If they're pressing and they're running their little thing, right? This is with a deep hat. This is, we can, heck, we can put two deep thirds. We can put two deep thirds over there. And what you'll see is you'll see the same result. I can hit this read against that. It's quick enough. It gets out there. It goes. Because it's outside release, because it's unbumpable, they can't press that route. Not Doesn't matter what they do. They can't press it. Now the issue comes where, and this is this is again, this is where the you know counter and back and forth and, and, and it goes. What happens is what they can do is they can come in and they can go, okay. Well now beat it. Zone drop, big nickel over G, cover two. And we'll come out in our spread. And what you'll see now. Deep half to the, or deep third. Now you've got Vada Scantling on the stick route. You've got the deep streak to kind of hold things a little bit. You've got this concept right here. Now watch. Oh man, he's going for 30 yards with him. And you, you there's not a window. There's not a window. Now you, you see what I'm, you see why that's significant. Now what you got to do as an offensive player is say, okay, well he's, uh, he's dropping, he's devoting so many resources to stopping this read. Everybody's dropping back. Let me pop this out and let me take my seven and eight yards. That's, you know, that's the idea here. Um, and that's why I talk about levels concepts being so daggone important. Um, but you'll see here. I mean, if it, literally, there's no window to throw this. If if I wanted to, I mean, I will, I will force the, you'll see it also here. If they were to run this, you see how that, it's going to completely glitch out that, coverage i mean there's nothing there's nothing that they can do against mesh and that's that's the thing that will save you uh in my opinion they do something like that okay well i'm running mesh now watch the deep third goes there and i can get that ball into there but the, i can either throw it early or i can throw it late you know obviously with that safety sitting there that's a good concept to be able to stop that. But look at all the resources they're devoting to stopping that. Now, again, um, the other thing that you have to understand about the big nickel over G, let's say they run this receiver. Um, so if they man a lot, this is man aligned out of the nickel over G. So what they're going to do now is they're going to throw the outside third over there on this left safety, something like that. 
this is going to completely torch it because your stick concept, you're going to get over the top. This is with his own drop. Passing that to the middle of the field, and you're going to, you're going to go. You know, there's just not enough resources to be able to devote to it. Now, what if they... The other question is, what if they do this? Like, can you run this to the short side? So we'll show you this. It's just a standard Y cross. See how it completely just boxes it. I mean, there's just nowhere to throw. So, but understand, disc opens up interior streets. I mean, you can hit big nickel over G. If they do that with their outside 30 and the inside guys, This is where your job as a, as a good Madden player is to say, okay, let me attack these seams or let me attack these, uh, these middle crossing routes. Um, one other thing, one other little trick, and this is why I love fade stops. This is why fade stops is such an important play in my offense. If they do that, you can come in here. We're going to outside third, right? And then we're going to middle third. Watch what happens. Fade stops. Got that route on the left to pull the outside third. He doesn't play it. You should be able to get that back. Dunbar. Did Dunbar play that? How did Dunbar play that? You should be able to get that ball. Here's, here's, and this is what you can do. I mean, this is why Big Nickel over G is one of the most unique defenses you can run because you can do so much from a coverage standpoint. That's why the meta will will shift probably to Big Nickel over G, in my opinion. See that? Dot. So, anyways, guys, that is some conversation on streaks. Uh, overall, I think you still want to use the, primarily as a general rule, you want to use the wiggly streak. But there's a lot of um, – you have to understand what the defense is trying to do, and you have to understand what they can do, what is actually possible. And, and if they're in big nickel over G, it is possible to stop this. But if they're not in big nickel over G, they're not. It's impossible. And if they're running a lot of outside thirds, your job as a good Madden player is to say, okay, well, I'm either going to take my flat or I'm going to hit the um, – I'm going to hit some of these crossing, deep crossing, deep over, deep over post routes – against these outside thirds and be able to glitch them out and get a one play touchdown so anyways i want to thank you guys i know this was a long video i hope it was helpful let me know if you like videos like this i can do more of this but this is all around the subject of what streak to run make sure you jump in the discord if you want to pick up the full offense you can pick that up in the description below this video i'm also going to throw a couple of videos on the screen here for you guys to check out but a lot of good stuff here hopefully you enjoyed